The voice of Husker Nation is on the air. This is Hale Varsity Radio. Insight, opinion, expertise, along with the biggest names talking Nebraska sports. Join in with the show at 402-489-1240 or 1-800-825-5865. Now, here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt and Elijah Herbel. Welcome to it, Roadshow Thursday. It's Hale Varsity, powered by Cornhead Logger, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbel en route. We uh, have a, a first in, not the stream yard, but here in the single barrel, inside the graduate Roadshow here, getting you ready for the spring game Saturday, getting you ready for the NFL draft tonight. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbel, Connor Clark back in studio as we're at 9th and P. Here at the Single Barrel. You want a whiskey? You want a beer? You want a big old steak? I want all of it. Nebraskans things. love, and, and Connor wants all of it. Uh, get on down here to the Single Barrel. We're here till 6 tonight. We're here 10 to make that a – hold on a minute. We're here 8 to 10 on Saturday. Great breakfasts every, uh, every morning here starting at 7 a.m. at the Single Barrel. But if you're a Nebraska fan, you're coming into town for the game, the Single Barrel – is where you got to eat. The graduates where you got to stay, and we just got to meet uh, an American hero in uh, in uh, in Brian, mm-hmm. Brian with the U.S. Navy, originally from Iowa, family in Nebraska, as uh, he uh, is in town. So Brian, our honorary number one, as he was the first here in the single barrel. We'll get to our StreamYard shout-outs here, our starting five. Many of you check us out on Hale Varsity YouTube every day. We thank you kindly for that. Give us a follow and find on the Hale Varsity Twitter feed as well at HVarsity Radio. You can find my Twitter at Schmidt underscore radio at Herbal Essence for Elijah at C underscore Clark underscore 27 for Connor Clark. We'll hear from Matt Rule, his last post-practice presser pre-spring game. That uh, in a little bit. We're loaded up to plenty of NFL draft thoughts today. Brandon Vogel from Counter Reed. We'll talk uh, some Big Red football with him. Uh, Vogues is also a, a Bears guy, as is Connor, as is Danny Burke. We are surrounded by Bears fans. That's all right. Big moment tonight for the Chicago Bears with Caleb Williams, presumably. So Vogues in hour one. He is at the draft. He is anchoring ABC's coverage with Nick Saban tonight for ABC ESPN Field Yates. Our conversation with Field Yates, draft analyst and NFL insider at 5.05. And uh, then Coach Barnett will join us. We'll talk spring game. We'll talk Dylan Raiola. He'll even talk Dylan Edwards with us as a prized back in the portal. Danny Burke from Burke's Best Bets at 5.40 rounds us out. Kind of a, a damp, gloomy, but not cold day in downtown Lincoln, but uh, you're invited out, warm up, maybe a cup of soup, maybe uh, a, a Guinness, or uh, maybe just a little Jack Daniels, Elijah. Well, you have all the choices of whiskey here that you could want. I was going to say, you could Over go 250. With, you go with the Jack, you could go with uh, the Larceny. Um, I got to check out and see if they got the Bone Crusher. That's the one I've been uh, drinking at home here recently. That's the thing about a gloomy day like today. You could take a nap. Gl- or gloomy, could... gloomy in appearance only. I mean, it didn't feel gloomy. Oh, I guess. Compared in a way, to yes, in a way, no. I mean, it, 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 this is like standard spring in Nebraska. For true. some people, this is gloomy. To me, perfect day to have three to four glasses of whiskey at the single barrel <laughs> in downtown Lincoln <laughs> to get myself geared up between for, between four and six. Huh? Well, I have to get myself ready for the misfortune that will be the Broncos draft tonight. I have low, low hopes for what the Broncos will do. High hopes for the Nuggets tonight at nine, but low hopes for the the Broncos. We'll see. If the Broncos trade up, though, it will be a a rough night for me. Let's talk about hope. You have your hopes pinned on Denver making good draft decisions. Connor, you have your hopes pinned on Caleb Williams working out uh, in the top spot as the top quarterback, the franchise changer. You have hopes that pick number nine is also sweet. A lot of uh, capital for Chicago to spend this NFL draft in some key spots. I have hope that uh, Saturday and kickoff gets here sooner rather than later. I have gone from zero to 60 
on the excitement level for for Saturday. And Matt Rule kind of laid it out. It sounds like it's going to be kind of a fun, wide open uh, spring game where they're going to let the guys go play. And something he said, and we'll hear more from Coach Rule in a moment, but I think Nebraska fans have been waiting a long time for the Saturday Huskers. And what he said about, hey, Tuesdays and Thursdays, at least in his first year, was good. The practices were good. The attention was good. The work was good. All that's wonderful. But we've talked for a lot of years, fellas, about that translation, translating from practice to performance on the football field in some key moments, and that's been an emphasis and a focus for Nebraska uh, this spring and beyond, and that's what Saturday is going to be. What's the pecker factor? What's the consequence, and how do you perform when the lights are on? If you're a five-star, if you're an Elite 11, if you're the incumbent, if you're a kid getting some of his first meaningful snaps uh, against uh, another peer, offensive line to defensive line, if you're one of those running backs or, or young wideouts, I should say, trying to, to kind of cap off uh, what, what's been a good spring for you. Or maybe does it kind of click? Do the light, does the light come on? Does it slow down for you after all the work? Time will tell. It's not UTEP yet. It's not Colorado yet. It's not at Ohio State yet. It's not at Purdue. It's not USC in mid-November. But this is all part of that progression, and uh, it, it ends – this spring session on Saturday. We're here at the Single Barrel, 9th and P, inside the Graduate Roadshow Thursday, getting you ready for not only the spring game, but also, yes, the NFL draft. Well, before we get into this Matt Rule audio, it seems like KG wants to pick it with me today. Not having it. It must be so sad being a Bears fan. The yearly highlight is the draft. Then that high gets crushed by week three. Although it may be true, KG, I'm not having it. This is going to be a good night for the Bears, and God, I hope it works out. <laughs> At least draft night's a positive for Bears fans. The Broncos are taking Paxton. You Lynch have and a Super Bowl Simeon in the last century, in the century, geez, <laughs> decade. Excuse me. Uh-huh. Sorry, Felt like it's it. a long day. I don't want to hear anything. Okay, the Bears have like you. It, it's crazy just seeing like Bears Twitter today. And how just starved for a decent quarterback that this city and franchise is. Hopefully that changes tonight. There's a lot of stock being put into it, obviously. But, man, wouldn't that be awesome if, if it ended up working out? Plus, the new stadium got revealed yesterday. So that's also an exciting thing. Well, let's hope they don't shut it down like Kansas City did with the Royals. Yeah. Well, let's just be honest. Uh, that, that could be... Not only a a Bears theme or a Denver theme from the Jimmy Mack days or the John Elway days or Peyton Manning days or, dare I say, the Zach Taylor or Eric Crouch or Tommy Frazier days. Nebraska has been starved for game-changing, playmaking, consistent quarterback play for a while as well. Uh, And, I mean, you can look at, at some of Tommy Armstrong's highlights but when we're talking all-American level, all-conference level, playmaker, difference maker, uh, Nebraska's in that same boat. You feel like uh, you have uh, choices on board with what Nebraska's been able to retain and, and bring in in the quarterback room. I'll say this to both of you. It, it's not as stigmatized anymore with the NFL and whiffing on a quarterback. Chances are... When it comes to where you're picking and who you're picking, your your miss slash whiff or hit rate is always going to be super volatile, volatile with that quarterback spot. Mm-hmm. And the, the 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 good news is NFL teams after one or two years they move on from a mistake. And in your case, Connor, you just get to pick again number one overall, not too far removed from just doing it. Well, to, to bring it back to college football here. It's the theme we've seen, and we've talked about it plenty within the past year, even past five years, Schmitty, since I joined you on this show, that the, that college football year to year is moving closer and closer to the NFL's model. They're taking more and more influence from the NFL. And what has the theme been in the NFL over the past decade or so? 
it's sink or swim when it comes to your, your young quarterbacks. The, the Jordan loves that get to sit for a year or two before they're thrown into the fire are now few and far between. In the modern NFL, whenever you draft a quarterback, that is the guy you're rolling with starting day one. That's the theme. That's how it's going to be for the Bears, likely whenever they draft Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams is going to be their guy from day one. Assuming that Jaden Daniels goes to Washington and assuming that Drake May goes to New England, which is kind of what a lot of the mocks have right Mm now, Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to find out in a couple hours, those are going to be the guys they're rolling with. Nebraska, I think we can all assume, is going to be rolling with Dylan Ryla as their starting quarterback this year. I still think the competition is there. Um, but I think we all know who's going to win that competition. It's, it's not a discredit to Daniel Kalen. It's just what it is in college football right now that whenever you have a guy, and we've seen this in the past couple of years, Trevor Lawrence at Clemson, Quinn Ewers at Texas. Like, whenever you have a guy, the guy gets thrown into the fire early. That's what I think we're going to see with Riola. And Saturday is really our first chance to see Riola maybe not facing live bolts, but as close as you can get in at a three-game level. environment. It's, it's, it's a sink or swim type moment. For, for Dylan Ryola, what is he? We know he's got probably more arm talent than any quarterback we've seen in Husker history. We can see that based on the highlights, but similar to college to the NFL, it's not just about arm talent. There's a lot more to play in the game of quarterback, and it gets harder as you step up level after level after level. So how close is he to being ready to be a college quarterback? I think we're going to have a much better idea after Saturday. Not the perfect idea, but it's a sink or swim type moment for Well, and, and look, there's, it's still shallow, all right? He, he's... He's got plenty of time to, if it's not a great performance, rebound. Mm -hmm. If it is a great performance, take it with what it is, and that's just your first introduction into a simulated game environment. It will be a game. The format is going to be ones versus ones, twos versus twos, threes versus threes. Now, the offensive line and wide receivers will be uh, shifting around teams uh, from team to team. But what this allows is your young guys or your first-time starters or the guys that haven't had as many reps as the Ty Robinsons and Bryce Benharts, it allows them to uh, feel this moment with 50, 60-plus thousand in the stands and then manage the moment accordingly. Let's get our StreamYard shout-outs, our starting five. As uh, we say hi to NU Grandpa, he's in. Mr. Jeff Snitley checks in on the stream Part of the Boulder Peace Treaty. Moonbot checking in already. Good to hear from Moonbot. Eat Beef is here. Moronic Figures is in. He says Skull Vikings. Oh, sorry, buddy. Brandon is here. KG's already chimed in off the top rope uh, at Cotter for the Bears. And then he threw in a but, Packers comment on top of it. Well, Unbelievable. clearly. <laughs> I'm trying to, to, to be helpful, says KG. It's not too late to turn... Not uh, your ways and, and be a helping. Packer fan. <laughs> KG also says uh, this when it comes to uh, where he comes in at number seven. Uh, seven, but number one in everyone's hearts except two of my three ex-wives. <laughs> they have no hearts. I like how he's still number one in the one <laughs> ex-wife's heart. I know. <laughs> I like that. Uh, pretty good. Dion is here. Dion, good to have you, dude. Appreciate you checking in. And uh, we'll get some more comments. Anonymous is here. And Anonymous uh, lays this out for Nebraska fans in the stream. Again, you want to read the stream, check us out on video. It's the Hale Varsity YouTube channel. Riola is the best pro pro prospect at quarterback we've had since Johnny Stanton. I think Johnny did some time at uh, NFL camps as an H-back. Tiger Shark Diver is here. Uh, So... MJ is in, uh, and MJ is going back to the days of Vince Ferragamo. No way his arm talent's better than Vince. It's a fun argument. I never got to watch Vince in college. Uh, Really not much in the NFL. Talked to Vince a few times. Wish I had Vince's uh, portfolio of properties in sunny Southern California. Uh, Excited that Brian's here listening to us. That's all good. I'm going to show this on the screen he gave us uh, a, a, a commemorative uh, keepsake here. Medallion, I think you'd call it? I would say a medallion. Uh, U.S. Navy, pretty awesome. I'm going to hold it up to the screen. Uh, both sides, incredible. Pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, Brandon Brian Vogel's also has himself, coming. it looks like a, is it an old-fashioned? I think it's an old-fashioned. Yeah, yeah that's, like, that's a good yeah. choice. It's a good choice here. It's without a, uh, Elijah's arm reach, which is nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. 
Uh, no, uh, the uh, the waitress did not have to wake Elijah up. We'll hear from Matt Rule here coming up in, in about 20 minutes. We'll check in with Brandon Vogel. But my theme and focus for Saturday is going to be, are they, are they finally a Saturday Nebraska team uh, is what Matt Rule wants to see. And can they put it on the grass, as Tony White would say, on both sides of it? I have a feeling the way the offense that Matt Rule talked about responded the last couple of practices, specifically last Saturday's scrimmage, it sounds like uh, there will be blood in said water for the defense uh, against that offense. So we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. We want you to get down here. Come see us here at the Single Barrel. We're Roadshow Thursday for the NFL Draft and gearing up for the spring game. And uh, we love our headquarters here at the Single Barrel, 9th and P inside the Graduate. Back here on Saturday morning for your pregame. Ahead of the spring game from 8 to 10. You want a steak, you want a whiskey. Uh, no better place here than the Single Barrel. Uh, Tuck asking if he made the top five. Uh, he did not, duck, Tuck, but good to have you. You're, uh, you're number one in KG Kids for Life's ex-wife is rankings. So number one in the heart. <laughs> number one in the heart, two sure. out of the three. <laughs> we'll hear from Brandon Vogel. Field Yates, less than an hour away from the NFL draft, as uh, he will tell us what he thinks about tonight's selection process. Gary Barnett, hour two. Hale Varsity continues powered by Cornhead Lager. And now, and now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Thanks for hanging out. It's Hale Varsity, powered by Cornhead Logger. Roadshow Thursday, NFL Draft is, well, less than an hour and a half away. Two hours, 34 minutes, 24 seconds as it ticks down from Detroit. And uh, we'll check in with Field Yates at 5.05. As uh, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, Connor Clark, and from Counter Reed, counterreed.com, it's Brandon Vogel to talk some big red football and maybe talk Connor into it being okay finally for that Bears excitement level. So, Vogues, we've kind of stumbled upon this. Who's in greater need for kind of that breakthrough quarterback play? Is it the Chicago Bears? Or is it Nebraska football? How are you today? I'm doing well. Uh, Technically, to the degree that I am a fan of the NFL, I am a Chicago Bears fan. Um, And I I wouldn't consider myself in in my role, but also just generally as a Nebraska fan. But Nebraska needs a breakthrough quarterback performance more. Um, That's that's where I'm going with, with that one. A lot of reasons for that, I think, but um, yeah, that, that, that's that's a tough one. That 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 strikes right at the core of, of what I <laughs> what I am and kind of what I'm not about. <laughs> now, Brandon, I was not alive for this. Schmidt and I talked about it before the show. That there's an old Tom Osborne quote that if the defense played well in the spring game, it meant they were probably going to have a good season in the fall. Does that still ring true with you now based on where this team is at right now? I know the old adage still goes offense wins games, defense wins championships. I think that's kind of at the heart of the old Tom Osborne quote that if the defense is able to stop that really difficult Nebraska triple option offense, means they're probably going to be good because the offense is so hard for everyone around the country to scheme for. But you look at where this Husker football team is at now with all the question marks on offense – do you think if the offense goes out there and dominates in the spring game that it actually means good things for this team in 2024? No, probably not. Um, <clears throat> spring games have gotten more and more. As, they, as more and more of them be, have become televised, I think, um, they've become harder and harder to, I think, extract meaningful data from. Like, you can be impressed by individuals, um, like – I'm going in Saturday super interested to see all of the quarterbacks, but, but particularly the, the two true freshmen. And beyond that, like, I think we, ha- we have a pretty good beat on, or at least I feel like I do, that Nebraska's defense is going to be good in, in 2024. So if the offense comes out here and <laughs> uh, it, it seems like it's, it's lighting it up uh, on Saturday – that's going to tell me that that was probably allowed to happen to, to a certain degree. Um, at least that's, that's how I would approach that because 
Nebraska's offense averaged 18 points a game last year. <laughs> they've they've got a lot to prove in in 2024. The defense does does not uh, because it allowed 18 points a game, which should win you some football games. Notice how Schmidt and I both laughed when you pointed out that they scored 18 points a game on offense last year. But let's sounds like the Bears, from, huh? Yeah, Sobering it, it really reality. Does. <laughs> but Matt Rule talked about how they're going to throw the football, or at least he wants to throw the football. What does that look like to you on Saturday? Because, as you just said, things get televised, more people watch, the more vanilla it gets on the field. So how far in that playbook do you expect this offense to go with the deep ball? Yeah, probably not that deep into the playbook. I mean, honestly, a couple of hitting a couple of deep balls would be nice, particularly if they connect a – a new on-campus quarterback to a new on-campus uh, wide receiver, or, or really even, you know, a young wide receiver who we, we saw flashes from last year. Uh, <clears throat> but I mean, really, the bigger thing I think for Nebraska when it gets to when it gets to the actual games, and you might be able to see this, is like, what are they doing on first and second down? Those those downs where you could run or pass, um, where you can run a fairly basic route combo, and like. Is, is the ball on time? Is it, is it where it needs to be? Is, is the receiver making a catch? I think those kind of more detailed pieces of it uh, might tell you a little bit more about the passing game than, than maybe the, the big plays that they have. Because I think Nebraska hit some big plays um, via scheme and, and via individual talent in some cases. Uh, but, but the piece that was missing was just kind of like, yeah, it's first and 10. We're trying to get six yards here. Can we make the throw and make the catch? Brandon Vogel is with us from Counter Read, counterread.com. Vogue's really enjoyed you and Aaron's work this week with Counter Read, Aaron Sorensen. And let's talk uh, about, again, meshing tonight together with Nebraska football and the NFL draft. And what, what do you believe Nebraska should be? Me and Babbers were talking earlier today, too, at the press conference, just looking through some of Nebraska's more wow drafts. The last first round offensive player to be selected went by the name of Lawrence Phillips. The last first round pick for Nebraska football, 13 years. There's a drought. Now, there's been the Levantes, the Randy Gregories, the Amirs. There's been the, 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 the Trey Palmers. Right, there's been some guys. You've got uh, Cam Taylor Britt. You have Cam Jurgens. So it's not been completely erased, but it's a far cry from every year. Worst case scenario, you've got a third round guy. Best case scenario, you've got a couple of first rounders. You got a second rounder. You've got some third guys. And in that '94 to about '02 window, you just kind of printed. <laughs> Rush ends or defensive tackles. I mean, just year after year after year with the Neil Smiths all the way through the Vanden Boshes or Steve Warrens. It was incredible. What is what should be normal for Nebraska on draft weekend? Yeah, it's it's a good question, and you know, I don't I don't follow the draft closely enough to like. I would say, like, look at look at Nebraska's peer programs. Like, they're real peer programs, not Georgia at the moment, um, not Alabama or Ohio State. Um, and and what kind of numbers are they are they putting up in the draft? And that's that's probably a pretty good guide. What I do know is like, you can just look at Nebraska's recent draft history, and, and for a long time they had that draft streak, right, where there was a player mm-hmm. that went in every draft for however many years, and it was the longest the longest of any school and like by the time you got to the 2018 draft so following 2017 season like tanner lee barely kept that thing alive and i don't even remember like which year it was that that streak ended but you just look at it so so tanner lee like barely keeps that alive um i'm probably forgetting a guy or two but from like the frost era you've got Cam Taylor Britt and Cam Jurgens to point to as two like homegrown guys, like real, like we mm-hmm. identified them, we recruited them. They came here, they played and they, they went and got drafted. Um, <clears throat> maybe there's another one or two, 
But then you're, you're you're looking at Nebraska's draft, and it's Maury Ture, who, who's a transfer. It's Trey Palmer, who who's a transfer. And, like, that's just – it's it's hard to win football games at the level you are – Nebraska has won previously, and I think the fan base still expects, when you're not putting those guys – those guys in the NFL draft, like they just don't have them. I, and, and I don't, I'll, I'll be very surprised if Oscar gets drafted uh, this weekend. And that's just kind of the reality of, of where things are. And it gets a little bit stark this time of year because yeah, we got spring games going on and we're wrapping up spring practice in Nebraska, but the draft, if you're a co- even a college football fan, uh, like myself, who doesn't care all that much about the NFL, like this is the crossover point. So you look at it and you're like, I don't know if it's great to <laughs> to not have any players drafted. And, and it's probably not. Even if the, you know, they, I, I do think there's a difference between being draftable and being a successful college player in, in some instances. But for the most part, like if you're if you're a good college player, you're going to get drafted. Brandon, one thing that I've said before on this show, and I also said it on the newest episode of the Average Joe Sports Show, is that how many first and second round picks a college football team has might be a better barometer for the health of your program in the modern era of college football than it ever has been before. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, it it could be. Um, I'll I'll say uh, it's not the college football that I want, but I think it might be the college football that that we have because even when nebraska was was like humming under under tom osborne and kind of running what it ran um to to schmitty's point about the last first rounder on offense you know at that time at, at that point like nebraska was extremely talented but they ran the option and you know and not the nfl was just like yeah we, we're, we're not we're not doing that we're not interested in that those lines have blurred since then um, but it's tough to like look at the Georgia and the Alabamas and the Ohio States of the world, um, see their performance in the draft and see what they do in college football and say, yeah, that, that kind of might be like what you have to do to like win at the utmost that at the top level in college football that said, you know, Nebraska is trying to get to a, a base camp that's not quite at the summit of that mountain yet, I think. In terms of, hey, can we can we get to a point where we're winning eight, nine, ten games consistently, and and what does that take? Uh, that probably doesn't look like uh, you know putting set six, seven guys in the first three rounds, um, but you got to have more, I think, than what Nebraska has had certainly. You know what it takes is some of the evaluation and development that you had with. Not only the scouting part, and you got to give Callahan credit, he brought in a lot of NFL guys that may not have been NFL ready. Bo got them developed, and then some of the guys that went after Bo's tenure ended ended up into the league, and then you've got some some crossover that that got drafted under Riley, and then you've got just this, this kind of just drop-dead moment where – the, the the streak snapped and then you're trying to, to rebuild up and oh by the way it, it kind of coincides too with from a bowl standpoint can i get two minutes on the other side vogues is that all right sure all right brandon vogel will hold over here with us counter read counter read.com chris schmidt elijah herbal counter clark we're on the road today getting you ready for the nfl draft tvs here at the single barrel ninth and p inside the graduate downtown Lincoln, our uh, football headquarters. And what's really awesome is uh, we'll be back here Saturday morning for the weekend edition. A little bit of a flex schedule time for the live show, 8 to 10 Saturday morning. So a couple more thoughts from Vogues. We'll hear from Matt Rule, Field Yates from the draft in hour two at Hale City, powered by Cornhead Lager. And now, and now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. A couple of nice recruits for Nebraska football 2025. We'll get to Brandon Vogel with us from Counter Reed. CounterReed.com. When you think of Detroit slash Michigan, 
music, Brandon Vogel? Is it Ted Nugent, Bob Seger, Insane Clown Posse, Eminem, <laughs> oh my goodness, D. Snyder, Kid Rock, or Iggy Pop? Who is Brandon Vogel's draft pick? If you say Insane Clown Posse, we may never have you on the show. I, I can't have, believe that's I even have, an option. I have <laughs> relatives that actually went and saw them in Kansas City. I will not out my relative. Um. <clears throat> I want to say the pick that I want you to think I have is Iggy Pop. Um, yeah. And it's not because I was like, I, I, I ever listened to this, but like the first band I think of is Insane Clown Posse. It oh, really no. is. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating kind of uh, cultural entry into the, the fabric of, of America, I can tell you. Um, Every time I've been to Michigan, which has solely been for Nebraska football reasons, either they're playing at Michigan or they're playing at Michigan State, it's always struck me as just kind of like a strange place. Um, I, I, I can't really describe it. And then, like, I, I make myself, I'm like, ah, oh, but this makes sense. Like, Kid Rock and Insane Clown Posse are from here. Like, I, I get it now. And I mean, on, like, of, of those artists that you list, listed, like the the one that I probably actually listened to the most was probably Eminem. Okay. Uh, though, though I was never like the biggest fan, um, but you know he was becoming huge at, at at an impressionable time for me, and and even Eminem like was was a bit strange uh, in terms of when he entered entered the game, so to speak. So, Michigan, I, I haven't figured it out yet. I'll put it that way. Cranach believes there's uh, lots of militia in, in Michigan uh, based based on uh, our, our time at East Lansing last fall. What do you believe about the, uh, the format tomorrow and rules comment today on the pressure part of things, not only for the head coach, but the quarterback here? Yeah, I thought, I thought it was pretty good. You know, um, I, I think – I think rule does a nice job of balancing like, Hey, you know, there are coaches out there that are just like, I'm not going to do anything in the spring game. Like, I don't care. Like, uh, it's, I I don't want this stuff out there. Um, and and that's what I want to do. Um, and I mean, rule even said like, if, if he had his quote unquote druthers, like he'd probably go with a system that like, awards points to the defense, which we saw at Nebraska once previously, at least once. Um, And I I would agree with him. Like that scoring system sucks. Like it's, it's impossible to follow. (laughs) It's um, it makes sense, but it's just like, you're sitting there. You're like, "Uh, who's, who's winning? What's happening? How many points is that? Um, So I think you just line up and play, play like pure football. And, and like, you know, we've also seen coaches at, it, at Nebraska in the past, I think, and elsewhere who are just like, well, this 15th practice is just gone. It's like a showcase. And, and that's what we do. Um, and, and rule, I think, looks at it as, well, we're playing in front of fans, in, in front of a remarkably large amount of fans um, contextually. So let's use let's use that to our advantage. So I think it's the right balance of for your 15th practice of the spring of like, Hey, let's try to get something from this, but let's also acknowledge that, Hey, this is, a, this one's a little bit for everybody else. Brandon, when it comes to a winner, we've seen coaches do it in, in different ways before we've had the, the winners get the steak dinner, the losers get the hot dogs in the modern era. Would it be legal under NCAA bylaws to have the winning team get an NIL check that they get to split among themselves. Was that, would that be a legal way to incentivize winning the spring game? I think you're onto something. That's, that's, that's a good question. I mean, uh, let's, let's, let's walk it out. Hypothetically, you just need a business or a, um, or a potential donor to say, I would like to provide an NIL deal to anyone who is on the winning team in the spring game. And, um, yeah, it might be that simple. Like, uh, I'm trying to insert business here. They're like, yep, $5,000 to everybody who, who is on the winning team at the spring game. Everybody gets cool Which is, is very much in line with I think, <laughs> how NIL is actually actually working in college athletics. And that it's not actually about market value. It's just been like, it's just a way where it's like, yeah, we can pay these guys now. Um, so, so we're going to do that. Bogues, what's coming up from you with Counter Reed? 
counterread.com. How can folks get signed up? Yeah, you can check us out at counterread.com. Um, we'll, of course, be uh, all in on the spring game in the next couple of days. I think uh, Aaron tomorrow has, has a newsletter coming out on uh, some, Nebraska's two commits, um, but also taking a look at some of the official visitors in town, which is interesting because Matt Rule spoke about it on Thursday about mm-hmm making that an official visit day um on saturday we'll have a little spring game preview right away first thing in the morning and then plenty to come after we we actually see the game um and have you know the the longest practice yet to to overreact to for for the rest of the summer brandon who wins on saturday red or white not knowing anything about the rosters not knowing anything about the game itself just your thought red or white who wins red I'm gonna go. Nice. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with red. I think you picked red last year too. I like asking this question every single year. Why it's completely 20, irrelevant? Like, like twice. <laughs> Bogues will check in Saturday morning for the weekend edition here from the Single Barrel. Thanks again, bud. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. There he is. Good to spend time with Vogues. Let's sneak in what Rule was talking about here, about that uh, that pressure, that stage, and uh, getting ready for Saturday's and Saturday's spring game. Cut six here. Pressure with the head coach, pressure with the top quarterback. I, I, Husker fans have pretty high standard. You know, I'm, pretty, I'm sure that I, if I was a Husker fan, I'd just be coming hoping that the ball's not on the ground. You know what I mean? Like, hey, let's, let's play real football. So, um, but I mean, you want to be the starting quarterback at Nebraska? You better be ready to, better be ready to deal with the heat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, Heinrich learned that last year. A lot of guys have learned that it's, it's hard. You know, after games, after games, you guys, you guys don't talk to Gifford after every game, do you? You don't talk to Nash after every game. You talk to me and the quarterback. And so the two people with the most pressure are me and the quarterback. And so they, they better, if a freshman's starting, they better learn it now. Hmm. Yeah, fair. Very real, laying it out there. Uh, let's talk about what's gone on all spring and what needs to happen Saturday. Cut five here from that rule of time. To me, um, you know, great players – do what they do. They don't do new stuff. And so, you know, the analogy I just gave our players in here is like a lot of them play Madden. You know, if you, if you call, if you call engage eight on defense in Madden and it doesn't, you, so you know, engage eight. All right. I said that I don't, I don't play it. I was like, if they still have engage eight. And they're like, yeah, if you call engage eight and then eight guys don't blitz, you think your game's broke. Well, when you're calling plays and you're calling an out cut by one and a shallow cross by two, and they don't do that. <laughs> you're like, I don't, how do you call the plays? Right? So, my challenge to the guys is just, hey, do what you've been doing all spring. And that's really true for the quarterbacks, right? Um, I think with the headsets and the operation and all that stuff, being in two minute for us will really help so that we can, you know, I don't want to get to the first game. And if a freshman's starting, you know, I mean, we, we have a 66% chance of a freshman starting. It's what I've said to the coaches all spring. So I don't want to get there and all of a sudden it's the first time. And then if Heinrich's starting, um, it's his first time using the headset. So I really want this operation to flow, um, especially at the end of games. So I'm hoping it's loud. So that the guys get used to, hey, we're on the road. We're, you know, we're at uh, Purdue. You know, we have to go win the game at the end of the game in two minutes. What's it going to sound and feel like? So th- those are the things I'm really looking for from a football standpoint. If it doesn't look the way we play, so be it. And now, and now back to Hale Varsity Radio. Winding down this first hour here at the Single Barrel inside the Graduate Ninth and P downtown Lincoln. Getting you ready for the NFL draft. There's a crowd in Detroit. Shocker, not at all. When you look at the uh, the NFL draft getting going here at 7 Central. Don't know that we hear any Huskers this weekend, but I think you'll have a good shot of a couple of guys landing on rosters. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, Connor Clark, Hale Varsity Roadshow. We are back here Saturday morning for the weekend edition, 8 to 10 AM. So we invite you down today here till six. We invite you down tomorrow morning. Uh, check that Saturday morning. Saturday morning. A uh, reminder to get buckled up. Use your seat belt. It saves lives. It prevents injuries. Only if properly worn. Make it click. A message from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Part of the NFL draft coverage. Field Yates with ESPN NFL Insider, co-hosting the ABC draft and uh, broadcast with Nick Saban, our conversation with him in about 10 minutes. Gary Barnett will give us the lowdown on Dylan Edwards, the talented back, Bolting, Colorado. What's he think of 
Riola. And what do you think of this quarterback class? Coach Barney has seen them all the last couple of years covering uh, Colorado football. They've played the Buffs. A lot of the, the top quarterbacks have, and they had good days. So uh, uh, it's, um, it's something to, to, to wait for in our two. Danny Burke, pride of Chicago, Burke's best bets. He'll join us as well real quick, and then I'll shut up, Elijah. Uh, if you haven't got your reservations yet, mm. do so now for tomorrow night at Herdant Sports Bar and Grill in La Vista. Uh, it is the uh, Team Jack event, a panel, Anna Bellinghausen going to be hosting that. Kenny Bell, Amir Abdullah, and Nate Gary on hand. Doors open at 5 for Herdant Sports Bar and Grill in La Vista. Uh, the, the, the panel starts at 5.30. All proceeds go to take care of the great folks at Team Jack and their fight against pediatric brain cancer. So I don't know how much room is left, but do not wait. Check it out. Log on. Heard at Sports Bar and Grill or log on to teamjack.org. Quickly here, I just want to say we got Field Yates coming up at the top of the hour, as you said. We have the ESPN pre-draft coverage going up as we speak right now. And I just want to say we have Nick Saban sitting directly next to Pat McAfee. I don't know if I've seen Nick Saban smile this much in years. They're the, both they're both <laughs> West Virginia guys. And the chemistry is just, it, it looks great. We obviously are doing a show, so we don't have the sound on, but... One of those matches that I don't think I expected to work, but it appears to be working. I wonder if, if Saban actually has a, a career in broadcasting as opposed to being college football Pat star. makes it fun for him, Connor and Elijah, don't you? Well, that's Probably. What, has college football ever been this fun for Nick Saban? Like, even when he wins his national championships, he well, smiles Saban, for five seconds and says yeah, on to next year. Saban got a, a monthly stipend from the McAfee show to appear, so of course he's going to be a happy dude. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not that St. Nick, Nick needs any money, but... Yeah, he got taken care of, man, by uh, by uh, by McAfee. Yeah, so. I'd, I'd probably be smiling making that uh-huh. much money and work on TV, <laughs> too. I, I don't have to recruit. <laughs> I don't have anyone walking into my office saying, yeah, coach, I need another half mil or I'm transferring. Uh, I've lost all control of creating value for yourself, and my vaunted process is out the window in the wild west of college athletics now. So... Yeah, Saban's happy as hell to be out. He can actually enjoy his boat, his lake house. And he'll pop and on he should. TV. He should. He absolutely. should. Deserves it. Uh, he'll find his way to the golf course. Field Yates coming up. We'll kick off hour two. Gary Barnett. We're here at the Single Barrel with Hale Varsity. The voice of Husker Nation is on the air. This is Hale Varsity Radio. Insight, opinion, expertise, along with the biggest names talking Nebraska sports. Join in with the show at 402-489-1240 or 1-800-825-5865. Now, here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt and Elijah Herbel. Back into it at Tail Bar City, powered by Cornhead Lager. We welcome in Field Yates, uh, NFL insider, draft analyst. You'll catch him on ABC for the draft coverage. Field, nice to spend a few minutes with you. How's the week? Uh, it's a crazy week, but we absolutely love it. So I appreciate you having me on. Appreciate your time. You comb through so much data and film. What's the, uh, what's the number? What's your war room look like, man? Uh, uh, it's crazy these days. Right now, we are doing our absolute best to uh, keep up with all the various names. I'd say the biggest reality about this event that people probably overlook is that, well, probably ninety-eight percent of the coverage over the next, you know, few days here will be glued towards who's going number one, number two, number three, top ten. You know, I'm doing my best to stay on top of these guys that might not hear their name called in two, until two hundred fifty-seven, two hundred fifty-seventh overall, and small school wide receivers and you know unknown players to most of america so it's quite a balancing act but man is it a whole lot of fun it's like fit together a huge huge jigsaw puzzle field we'll get to some of your thoughts on this year's class in a moment but want to hear about your story if that's okay and how you were able to to, to soak in this nfl knowledge obviously you're in media now but you spent time with the chiefs and before that with new england yeah, so that was sort of my football Rosetta Stone was learning in the early days of my scouting career. So it kind of gave me a little bit of a, uh, you know, feel for how this process works. So 
grateful daily for how uh, those two stops in my life prepared me for this opportunity right now and learned a lot for some great people and was fortunate to see kind of a couple different vantage points. You know, in New England, it was interesting to see things from the top, right? You know, how you build a team when you're trying to maintain the status quo and being a contender is different than when I was in Kansas City. This was, you know, before the world we know the Chiefs as. This was before Patrick Mahomes was on the roster. So you're trying to find a way to improve from four wins to six, six wins to eight, six, you know, eight wins to ten, things of that nature. So I felt like uh, having kind of opposite ends of the spectrum was really valuable for my growth and uh, certainly has helped me a lot in this process now as I uh, continue to try to do my best to size up these uh, draft prospects for all 32 teams as opposed to doing so for just one team. Field Yates with us here on Hale Varsity, NFL Draft Analyst uh, at Field Yates on Twitter, where you can follow him. When we talk about, let's go to New England for a second, what was their, what was so magical, precise about their process when it comes to fit, when it comes to character, the evaluation of their players, uh, Belichick included so well in the late rounds for so many years? I'd say there were two things that stood out to me. One was I've never been around a place that had a more unified purpose or vision or goal. So everybody was, you know, the the boat was always rowing in the right direction. You know, there wasn't a lot of people that had competing agendas. That was certainly a big part of it. And the second was, you know, New England, they weren't too worried about what everybody else was doing. And so while it's useful to have data points about who is mocking these players where and what, People like myself now are thinking the Falcons will do it eight or the Saints will do it 14. They're more concerned about finding players that fill their various needs. And I'd say as a result of that, uh, it allowed them to, you know, sometimes sort of win around the margins with some later round picks, but also sometimes be bold in the early rounds and get some players that uh, people weren't looking at the right way and find some real diamonds in the rough. Field, when we look at this draft, it will be known for what position group to project into the future, I'm asking the quarterback class, the wide receiver class, the offensive tackle class, or the edge class? I think it's a quarterback class. And, and, and I, I, it's a historically deep wide receiver class as well. I'm not ignoring that. But ultimately, quarterbacks just matter so much uh, that if you have some hits in what could be a six quarterbacks in the first round class, then invariably you end up getting – Uh, you know, a lot of attention drawn to that class. Now, if you have a lot of misses in a six quarterbacks in the first round class, you get a lot of attention drawn to it for other reasons. I mean, just three years ago in 2021, five quarterbacks went the first 15 picks. Since that time, uh, two of them, three of them have already been traded in Justin Fields, Mac Jones, and Trey Lance. And a fourth could be traded as soon as this weekend, that being Zach Wilson. So um, I will tell you, uh, it is a uh, always, it is always an exercise about the quarterbacks more than anything else. Let's talk Caleb Williams field and say he goes to Chicago number one overall. That's the thought. What about the support staff there? Can he be different in the Windy City? I think so. I mean, I, I, I love the player, and I think that the situation's really good. I mean, you've got two good offensive tackles, two great receivers, bright offensive coordinator, and Shane Waldron. So, um, yeah, I'd love to tell you something innovative, different, or unique about Caleb Williams that you haven't heard somewhere over the past three to four months, but I think he's as advertised. To me, he's one of the most exciting prospects coming out in the draft in a long time. So uh, I think Caleb Williams can certainly be the antidote to the longstanding Chicago Bears quarterback problems. What do you think of Jaden Daniels? What can make him be that, that difference maker potentially in our nation's capital? I loved watching him even when he was young at Arizona State, and then he just kind of took off at LSU? I think that there are a lot of things. I think you you sort of highlighted a couple of them is, you know, he's a dual threat quarterback. So let's explain why that matters is that obviously as a runner, it's great when you can run around uh, or through defenders. But I think what's so much more important for Jaden Daniels is that he can stress you with his arm as well. So Jaden immediately changes the math of both your offense and your defense. And we're seeing this movement more in the NFL these days towards numbers, games, offense, right? So if you go and watch some of the stuff that San Francisco or the Rams or the Colts are doing, a lot of it is just simple math. Philadelphia as well, right? Every play has like three plays baked within it. Um, But in order to run some of the concepts that they are incorporating, you have to have a quarterback that can run. I mean, think about how different Philadelphia's offense would be if you didn't have a mobile quarterback 
like Jalen Hurts as an example, or even how much the Indianapolis Colts offense changed last year from Anthony Richardson to Gardner Minshew. So I think that Jaden Daniels' ability to change the math on offense and defense to me should not be overlooked. Uh, and on top of that, the clutch production was so great. It was so good in key moments last season. Uh, really helped carve out that you know likely top three draft status. Where are you with Drake May? I'm in on Drake May. I've got him as the fifth ranked player on my board. A guy who I think has immense upside, has immense potential. Uh, six foot four, 226 pounds, absolute rocket of an arm. Really crafty inside and outside of the pocket. Excellent athlete, terrific character, elite makeup. All of those things I think are really important. That uh, I'm far from giving up on Drake May. He might need a bit more time relative to Jaden Daniels, but Jaden's got three full years of college experience on Drake May, and I think that's probably part of the reason why right now it feels as though uh, Drake May is a less polished product than Jaden Daniels. couple of names in Big Ten country where we're at. Of course, J.J. McCarthy, Marvin Harrison Jr. Let's start with McCarthy. What do you believe about his uh, his upside? I know the guy is uber accurate. We saw him here in Lincoln when they named their score against Nebraska, and they did that to a lot of people. He is mobile. He's accurate. Is he a guy that could throw for 300 yards every weekend? Can he make that jump into the NFL, or do you think he'll find a spot, someone will trade up for him to manage and then make some plays? How do you see his NFL future? Probably somewhere in between. I don't think it's a game. I don't think a team that would trade up from 11 to 4 or 5, like the Vikings, would be angling for a game manager. But I also don't think that J.J. McCarthy is going to have the same video game numbers that maybe a Jaden Daniels can bring to the table or a Caleb Williams can bring to the table. So um, I, I just think he's got uh, a smaller sample size than all these other quarterbacks, which is part of the reason why he's much more of a projection. That's not J.J.'s fault. He doesn't call the plays. He doesn't uh, you know, decide how Michigan wants to stylistically build their offense. But um, – you know, when you have five full years or six full years as a starter like Jaden Daniels does or Michael Penix Jr. does, that's just going to give you more assurance about what the player currently is as opposed to where J.J. McCarthy is, who has just two-plus years of experience. How about Marvin Harrison Jr.? Is he somebody that can, can take that franchise that gets him and be one of the key reasons for a jump? Is he that – Dynamic. I know how great he's been in college, but uh, yeah, he's to- special. This is special. This is a classic. Don't overthink it. Prospect <laughs> Marvin Harrison Jr. He is as good as advertised. He does everything well. There's really no area of his game that I would put as anything other than above average to great. Uh, he's got the makeup. He's got the athleticism. He's got the skill set. Um, he is the most pro ready prospect in the entire class, in my opinion. So. Um, I, I understand that there can be various opinions or varying opinions on players, but really I would just tell people do not ever overthink it when it comes to Marvin Harrison Jr. This guy is the definition of a ready-made wide receiver. A couple more minutes. Field Yates with us, uh, NFL insider, draft expert, uh, ESPN, TV and radio. Uh, Field, uh, a thought with you on just some teams in this draft that can make that jump next season if they nail the draft that's the hope there's a reality and i know there's several teams that could trade up could trade down but who do you think's on the cusp of maybe being a perennial winner as hard as that is to do year in year out in the nfl yeah i stopped short of perennial winner but i'll give you two teams that can come come to mind as making a big jump this year one's the obvious one at chicago because if you nail the caleb williams pick and he becomes the player i think he's going to become and you're going to be really really good for a long time that's the obvious one, and obvious, and, and on top of that, they have that number nine pick, which means a very valuable player if the Bears stay at number nine overall. The second one uh, is the Cardinals, just because the Cardinals believe they have their quarterback, but they also have six picks in the first 90. So you take uh, six picks that early in the draft, you could potentially get six starters, and one of them might be Marvin Harrison Jr., a guy who I think is worth every bit of that fourth overall pick. So. Arizona does play in a division that's got, you know, some certainly uh, some competitive teams, 49ers, you know, going to the Super Bowl last year, the Rams making their big boost, and Seattle, another team that's going to be hovering right around that playoff picture. But uh, I think Arizona does have a chance to take a leap forward because of the sheer volume of picks they have this year. 
What are you hearing about Denver? Do the Broncos need to trade up for a quarterback? Which co- which quarterback could fall to to Peyton and company first? Do you think? Yeah, I think there will be a quarterback available at number twelve, maybe two available at number twelve. I just don't know if it's the preference of the Denver Broncos because I tell people often that you know scouting cor- uh, quarterbacks is sometimes like shopping for a home, right? I mean, <laughs> you and I might go into a neighborhood and see three different houses that are all priced for the same amount. You might like A, I might like B, and you know our realtor might like pick C. Um, and that, and so I may say that uh, only B is worth it. You may say only A is worth it, uh, and that's the reality with quarterbacks too. If Michael Penix Jr. is there or J.J. McCarthy is there, um, does that mean the Broncos, given their quarterback need, are going to pounce? It doesn't because they might not have the grade required to make that investment on either of those players. But uh, I just think given how little activity they've had at the quarterback spot in terms of adding players this offseason, we have to assume – We'll take a quarterback very early in the draft. Thought on the Cowboys. Uh, Their needs, their wants. Of course, Jerry and company want to get back to that uh, that promised land. Do they go offensive line early, or do you think Dallas goes with the skill spot? I think they have to go offensive line. They've got a massive gaping hole on the left side of the line. It's about the size of Tyron Smith, who, of course, signed with the Jets. (laughs) This offseason after an illustrious career with the Cowboys. So the Cowboys, I think, are a left tackle or left guard team. Uh, If they can find a tackle, they would keep Tyler Smith at left guard. If they uh, find a guard only, they would move Tyler Smith out to left tackle. Um, I also think that if all the tackles they love are gone, that they may move down a little bit because given how few additions they've made this offseason in free agency, they still have a bunch of needs. So lots of picks could certainly help. And uh, Field Yates with us here on Hale Varsity Field. We'll say goodbye to this. Your feel on uh, Michael Penix Jr. Do you love the arm? Yeah, probably. But the injury concern, where where do you weigh in on his pro prospects? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't have the medical information. So I'm, I'm not going to speak to that part because, you know, everybody has a different opinion on it. I like the player a whole bunch. That much is sure. He's got a rocket arm. I don't know that I'm quite as high on him as I am Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniel, and Drake May in that order. Jaden Daniels, excuse me. Uh, but, you know, spending time around Mike and seeing him throw at the senior bowl, and then again, it is pro day. Uh, I do think there is certainly uh, a lot to like about his game, the leadership, the left arm is a, uh, it's as strong as there is, an excellent vertical thrower as well, really smart guy, good processor. All those things give me a lot of confidence in him. Um, I think he ends up going in the first round as well. Field, thank you much for the time. Wonderful to spend a few minutes and talk draft with you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. Field Yates says he's gearing up for coverage on ABC with Nick Saban and uh, the game day crew. Uh, right now, Saban uh, with Herb Street, Brian Kelly. There's not been a, uh, a, a cage match yet between coach Saban and and coach Kelly but uh, they're all front and center (laughs) right now but field was incredible great knowledge Connor and and Elijah and nice for him to take time this week to catch up and kind of lay it out there the kind of some of the obvious on my part but hey he's in the thick of it him and Mel Kuyper and the crew doing uh, what they do and that's making phone calls and putting their final board together and it's a tough job because you have to sift through the smoke from the teams, the smoke from the agents. You have to find the truth. And we're, we're at the point, like, from what you hear from the NFL executives, the final 24 hours before the draft is whenever the real information really starts coming out. Like, the prevailing stories you hear within the past 24 hours tend to be true. Um, so it's a really interesting time as we're now an hour and a half away. Still think the Bears are going to go number one, but I think after that it might still be anyone's guess how the rest of that top ten plays out. Todd emails in, wins dictate future draftees since seasons are played before any draft. Only good players win and potentially get drafted. That goes back to that quarterback drought discussion. Uh, the Bears or the, or the Huskers? <laughs> who's, uh, who's gotten their fix? Gary Barnett's with us next on Hale Varsity. And now, and now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Back with you, it's Hale Varsity, powered by Cornhead Lager Roadshow here for the NFL Draft. Uh, 
at the Single Barrel inside the Graduate 9th and P. Going to be here Saturday morning for our pre-spring game coverage. We say hi to Hall of Famer and Coach Gary Barnett, Colorado Northwestern. Coach, uh, tis the season, right? We're, we're winding down spring action for a lot of college football programs. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm just trying to keep track of a little bit of the spring action. Uh, going home, going back to Boulder this week and do the uh, spring practice, last spring practice. I think we're going to get rain, though. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, we've got so many new players and <laughs> trying to keep up with the ones that are still there. seems like there's a trend, at least as I'm watching it, that guys are staying for about 10 or 11 days of spring and then putting themselves in the portal. Mm-hmm. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with their agents, with their representatives. So it's, uh, you know, it, it, anymore, it used to be spring was pretty important. Now I don't know that it is. You know, and that's what we're anxious to see in Lincoln is just what what kind of show slash improvement, what little glimmer of, of hope can you take with you going into the fall? I want to ask you, because his name's been mentioned about Nebraska being a landing spot. What's your take on Dylan Edwards? You got to see this kid as a true freshman game in, game out. Well, he's really dynamic. You know, he he had a great opening game, and he never really got on track after that. But he's very versatile. He's, uh, you know, he, he's he's not any bigger than a minute, but he's he's quick. He's got really good ball skills. Um, seems to have instincts. You know, he's a good player. He he was going to be a really important player, I think, to Colorado this year because they were going to use him in so many different ways. And, uh, I mean, he's fast. So he's a good player. You know, he's, he's undersized. But anymore with, uh, with the wide open offenses and the, the spread offenses, you know, just having a guy like that in space, guys like that can play in these offenses. And he's, he's a player. There's no question about it. I hate to even ask the the shocked term, but are you surprised, or does nothing surprise you anymore that he that he left? Because the kid came in and performed. You know, Chris, I used to be a, deathly afraid of snakes, and <laughs> and now I live in Arizona. I see them every day, and so I've become desensitized to it. So that's sort of the way it is now. I. The question was good. Was I surprised? I'm not surprised at anything anymore. I think there's more disappointment when something like this happens than there is surprise. Uh, But, uh, you know, I was at practice on Monday, or excuse me, Tuesday. And, you know, it was was a different vibe because that was the day that he wasn't showing up for practice. So um, it, it was a little different vibe, I think. And, takes you know it can take the unless he's been a problem within your locker room Mm -hmm. and you lose a guy like that it just sort of takes the the wind out of your sails and so uh we'll see how colorado responds to it but uh he's a good player and you know you just come to where these things just seem to be the norm now uh i was flying back with a donor actually and he just said i'm getting tired of all this um you know and and really, it's only it, it's not going to stop until fans say, "Hey, uh, we, we're not doing this mm-hmm. anymore," and and I don't see that happening anytime soon. But that's that's how it that's how it gets stopped. Gary Barnett's with us, Hale Varsity Radio. What did you take away from from Colorado uh, as you were watching practice? Uh, you know, I I, uh, I I've got I just got access to all the practice films Mm -hmm. and I was watching it on the film on the game on the plane coming back Uh, and I really wanted to see more of the offensive line so I just pretty much concentrate on the offensive line they're going to be better in the offensive line the big kid they got from uh, that's a freshman is going to be a really good player he's got really good skills and um, you know they they're going to they're going to be a very skilled uh, offensive team uh, at least at the receiver spot and the quarterback spot, they're going to be really skilled in the secondary. And then a- after that, they just they'll be better than they were, 
and both sides of the ball up front. But um, I haven't been able to assess all of that yet. Coach, what do you think Nebraska has in Dylan Riola? Coach Rule has been very matter-of-fact about the, the progress all three quarterbacks have made. I believe it. I'm anxious to see what they do. But I think it's going to be a, a celebration with a lot of veterans that have earned time away, uh, guys that have a 1,000 snaps already at, at the practice level. They're, they're not going to be playing their, their upperclassmen, but the young guys – will have a chance to thrive, and, and Dylan's one of those. What do you think uh, Nebraska has? It sounds like he's really separated, or, or that's the read anyway. He may have separated in this race. Well, he, he you know, if he has, um, you know, Coach Rule and the other coaches don't want to make that announcement. Uh, you know, they want everybody to feel like they're, everybody's in it. And I think uh, the spring, this game, and especially you guys have a lot of young players, that you're going to be able to play, and you've got enough players that you can play a game. And so that's that's a real fortunate thing for the fan base because we're only going to have a practice. And uh, while we're going to have about 27,000 people, it's just going to be a practice, a two-hour practice is all it's going to be mm-hmm. with some activities. There's going to be a lot of fun and big concert afterwards and a sort of a party going on during the, the spring practice and, so it'll be a happening. Unfortunately, I think we're going to have rain. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how that survives all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's great that you guys can have so many young players that you can have a game and actually get enthused about and see what the future looks like a little bit. Who's uh, the concert? Who's playing afterwards? Well, Little Wayne. Oh, nice. I, I, can't believe you did, I can't believe you didn't know that. Well, Little Wayne was supposed to be in Lincoln like two or three weeks ago, and the show got canceled. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah. Well, that's because he, he doesn't want to be a Husker. He wants to be a Buffalo. So. <laughs> For now, he may transfer out. <laughs> yeah, he went to Portal, and we picked him up. So. <laughs> Coach, let's talk a little NFL draft. Do you get excited for the draft uh, in all your years with – Kids, kids going, and uh, how do you treat this uh, this time of year? You know, um, because I really do watch all these guys and get a pretty good feel for them. Um, it's sort of like to me, the draft is anticlimactic. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter. I'm pretty sure, unless there's a real surprise that, that I haven't seen or anticipated, it pretty much always falls. Uh, along the lines that, you know, throughout the year, the mock drafts and the different guys talk about different players and what you observe doing, um, doing various shows and stuff. It, it's sort of pretty, uh, you know, it's it like it's already done. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's always something that pops in there that, you know, a last minute trade or what that makes it exciting. I don't really watch it, but I do stay. I watch the ticker going underneath. And, you know, I am interested in where everybody goes, but uh, I'm not tied into it. Do you like this quarterback class? I mean, there's been – we were talking a few years back about the 2021 20, 20, draft class, and four or five of those kids have already been traded away. Uh, now you fast forward. McCarthy, May, of course, Caleb Williams is the, the top guy. Uh, you have um, Pinnix, You have Nix. You have Jaden Daniels. I mean, you've got some dudes, and it's all, you know, conjecture. Do they translate to the next level? Do you love this quarterback room? I do love. I do like this quarterback room. I, I think probably the guy who hangs around the longest would be Drake May, just because he's he's not going to be a mobile quarterback and uh, subject himself to a lot of shots and injuries. But um, I, I like the whole draft. I like the receiver group. Um, you know, there's, I think there's 23 of the 32 guys are offensive players, and, and the ones that are defense are either corners or edge players. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> edge rushers. So it sure, sort of shows you where the, where the game's going, the NFL game. But, um, yeah, I think this is a great quarterback draft class, no question. Where are you at with Denver? Do you think, I mean, they traded for Zach Wilson. Great. Do you think Peyton tries to make a move at quarterback, or do you think they 
they uh, they go all in on Wilson, the other Wilson. <laughs> I can't imagine them going all in on Zach Wilson. Now, I was I have been I thought I really liked Zach Wilson when he was playing and coming out, and I really thought he was going to be the guy in New York. But it's you know, guy coming out of Utah going to New York City. That's you know that's a challenge in itself. But uh, I can I. I can't imagine. I mean, Zach Wilson does have really good skill, and uh, I, I really did like him. But I can't imagine Denver selling a house for him. That there's got to be somebody that's around that they can play with. So I, I sort of think that's good backup. But I'm not sure. I don't know the situation well enough. But um, I just can't imagine them hitching their wagon to Zach Wilson. What do you believe about McCarthy? He's been the big name this week. Does he get do people trade up to get him? Does Harbaugh get crazy and take him and move Herbert? I mean, there, there's so many different things floating out there today. Yeah, and I don't know how to take all that, but I'll tell you this: if if Harbaugh does take him, that tells you a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, it, it it really tells you because I mean Harbaugh's in a different position now than he was before than he than he was a year ago because. He now has to have the best quarterback that he can possibly get his hands on. <clears throat> and if he trades up for McCarthy, then he's he's got to have a lot of confidence in J.J. McCarthy as a pro-level quarterback. So uh, that'll be interesting to watch. Gary Barnett's with us. Coach, we'll say goodbye. Reaction to Reggie Bush getting his Heisman back. Uh, well, you know, things change, Chris. And I was in favor of him being penalized the way he was, and I'm also now in favor of him getting it back given the fact that uh, the world doesn't want rules like that anymore. So, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm good with it either way. <clears throat> Happy for him probably, but at the same time, you know, he was breaking rules. They broke big rules, and at the time those rules were the rules and they were important. Now those rules, nobody wants them anymore, so they got rid of them. And he gets his trophy back, and I'm happy for him. So, Coach, enjoy your spring game weekend, and we'll get caught up again soon. Thanks for the time. All right, Chris. Great, great being with you. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Pretty quick turnaround for Field Yates as he is on the ESPN draft panel right now he's in the green room he is in the green room they've done a lot of work on the green room in recent years it's it's gotten swanky looking it's gotten from like it's gotten from like hotel conference room to like five-star hotel lobby you know do they have shrimp cocktail in the the green room it's not Uh, i'm wondering no it's not in well there's only one i was gonna cocktail (laughs) good work connor i was gonna ask if they have an open bar that's a real question for for the green room. The guy sitting there on pick 29, he thought he was going to go in the top 10. He's now 10 coors deep. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, I wonder if uh, if Danny Burke had his druthers, would, would it be a, an open bar? Is it an open bar tonight from a celebration angle for his Chicago Bears, for Connor Clark's Chicago Bears, for Brandon Vogel's Chicago Bears, for Coach Jeff Smith's Chicago Bears. <laughs> Pride of Chicago, Daddy Burke with us, Burke's Best Bets, and uh, Burke's Beat Podcast, Burke's Beat Blog. Log on and check out Danny's thoughts. Pride of Chicago at Daddy Burke 5. How are we doing tonight? Are you uh, in celebration mode with your mates? I'm doing good, fellas. Yes, I am in celebration mode. Uh, the hopefully beginning of a new era in Chicago Bears fandom and franchise history going forward, right? I mean, this is the day hopefully we look back on and say that was the turn of everything. Finally, the Bears get their franchise quarterback in Caleb Williams, and then we'll see what they do with that number nine pick. Big question marks whether they get one of the receivers, trade down, get a guy like Byron Murphy, a lot of things up in the air. But uh, excitement all around. And I feel like from an outside perspective, people may be chuckling and going, what is this going to be any different than the years past? You had excitement with Trubisky, with Fields. It just feels like, knock on wood, their fans are finally due. And this has to be the guy to finally work out. Bigger moment this week for Nebraska in finding that quarterback drought, thirst quencher, or the Chicago Bears? 
<laughs> it's got to be the Bears, right? It is the <laughs> Chicago Bears. And, and I was cracking up, Gooch, to you saying how many Bears fans are involved with the program with Hale Varsity Radio and everything. And it's just, you know, we got so many people part of the show that uh, are just in dire need of a successful professional NFL team. I mean, Nebraska at least had the 90s and still some winning seasons. Those Bears fans really have not had any offense or anything for that matter. So uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed, and I uh, think we get a little bit of the edge there. Danny, Danny, really fast here. Do you know this off the top of your head? What are the Bears' odds to make the postseason? I'm a firm believer that if the Bears do well in this draft, they're set up to be a team that could maybe get a wild card into the NFL playoffs next season. Do you know the odds off the top of your head? Uh, let's see. I'm looking it up at one book right now, scrolling through. Uh, it says the yes is minus 120, the no is even money, and which seems absurd to think for what the Bears did last year, the year prior, and bringing in a rookie quarterback, but that's the difference here. You have an absolute stud potentially in Caleb Williams. You saw what someone like C.J. Stroud was able to do last year, and you got to recall the Bears already have C.J. Moore. They already had an improving defense. The secondary, that's good. May have gotten better with the additions of Jonathan Owens, Kevin Byard. You got DeAndre Swift, Gerald Everett, Keenan Allen. So we're assuming that the offensive line and someone to pair with Montez Sweat is a necessity. Getting a receiver is a necessity, too, because even with the addition of Keenan Allen, remember, he's 32 years old, final year of his contract. Love the guy. But you want to bring up someone to mold alongside Caleb Williams and for him to really just have a buddy to work with throughout his tenure as a Chicago Bear. And the Detroit Lions, maybe they plateau a little bit. Packers, I, I don't think, are going to be in the postseason this year, despite what everybody else says and all the admiration for Jordan Love. And then the Vikings are going to be in a rebuilding process themselves, depending on who they pick to be their quarter, uh, quarterback, which, by the way, I think Michael Pettis Jr. is the sneaky guy to think it's going to happen. I took that at 6-1 to one for that to occur. But, yeah, I, I get why the Bears are showing a lot of love. They'll have a last-place schedule and it, it makes sense why you've got to pay a little bit to bank on them getting there. Do I think you should bet it right now this far out and laying a price? No, I, I don't think you should do that whatsoever because there's still an adjustment period, and the NFC North will still be more competitive than it has been in the past. But all in all, it does make sense that the odds are where they are. Danny Burks with us here, Burks Best Bets on Hale Varsity Radio. And, Danny, I think the intriguing storyline to me, how many quarterbacks are going to be going in that top ten tonight in the NFL draft. You have uh, Caleb Williams, obviously the presumptive number one pick. Daniels and Drake May also assumed to go within that top ten. Fun fact here, I didn't realize until today that Drake May is related, I believe the brother of uh, Luke May, the North Carolina basketball player, who yep. that shot to send him to the Final Four. I just realized that today, um, and he went viral for making it to his 8 a.m. class the next day. That's an aside. The intrigue to me, though, Danny, is on uh, J.J. McCarthy, former Michigan quarterback. The odds in Vegas have told you that there's a lot of juice to him going in the top five, maybe even number two. Do you think that's legit? Is that something you're looking at? What is your, your thoughts with the betting market moving so significantly in the past week with J.J. McCarthy? Yeah, it's been wild. And actually last night I talked about it on my draft podcast. I took J.J. McCarthy to be drafted over five and a half, meaning six, seven, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I got it at the price of plus 182. Now you see it at some shops as high as like minus 140. So there's been a lot of love now in the betting market that's assuming that he's going to be drafted a little bit later than expected. And the reason being is because I think more people are expecting that, not really a downgrade on McCarthy, but that the Cardinals aren't going to trade out of the number four spot. And then the Chargers will also stay in the five spot and either get a receiver or an offensive lineman. J.J. McCarthy also went on the Rich Eisen show and said he spent the most time with the New York Giants. Now the Giants are interesting because he just signed a ridiculous contract with Daniel Jones last year. And then uh, they also brought in, uh, who is it, uh, Drew Locke, your boy Drew Locke, former Denver Broncos. So, Don't call him my um, boy. <laughs> he is. <laughs> hey, hey, you got to get a little better. He used to be your guy somewhat. But nevertheless, I, my I think guy. that leads McCarthy to realistically getting picked by the Giants or the Vikings a little bit down the line. And if the Lions, or part of me, the Vikings don't feel threatened, that somebody's going to take him ahead of them, or they like Penix better, and they probably won't have to trade up to do so with presumably the Chargers. So that's why I think the sentiment has changed 
and a lot of betters, and hopefully myself included, saw some value on the over, especially with that plus money price. So, yeah, that's not too surprising for me to see that movement head that way. Danny, who do you see the Bears taking at number nine here in the first round? we got about a minute here. Yeah, Connor, I, I want them to take a receiver. I want Odunze, who's a realistic choice for that to happen, to fall to them and they take them. Because, again, like I mentioned, you know, Keenan Allen isn't going to be the savior for the next five years, but someone they draft in the first round could be. I get it to deep class. I think Poles is probably going to trade down, and I think they're going to end up with a defensive guy coming off the edge or defensive interior. Uh, again, Murphy seems to be the popular name, and I think they'll go with him. Then I think they'll go with the receiver later in the draft and probably beef up then on the offensive line. It depends who's available on the offensive line when they trade down, but I think uh, defensive front is a real dire need for this squad right now. Daddy, uh, about 15 seconds. Tell folks where they can hear you and read you and what you're doing with Burke's Beat. Yeah, birdspeak.com is the website, handicapping every single day. we got baseball, a bunch of postseason action in the NBA happening, and, of course, you can find the uh, NFL Draft Act if you still want to get involved. Podcast, Apple, Spotify, just search for uh, Birdspeak. Daddy, we'll check in next week. Thank you, sir. Hey, always appreciate it, fellas. Enjoy the draft. Talk to you next week. And now. And now. Back to Hale Varsity Radio. One final time, this has been awesome here at the Single Barrel inside the Graduate Ninth and P here for the NFL Draft and getting you geared up for the spring game Saturday. We're back here at the Single Barrel from 8 to 10 Saturday morning. Breakfast starts at 7. Get here and swing on by if you're making your way into Lincoln for the spring game tomorrow night. Graduate, obviously, an awesome spot to stay Single Barrel is where you need to get your your red meat game right, or your pork chops, or your whiskey, Wait, or por- a beer. Pork pork chop is red meat. It doesn't look like it, but it technically uh, is. But I always thought, you know, the uh, Way to get pork, technical. the other the other white meat. Yeah, that's it's the same. Your but steak it's not versus actually. your pork. Go- Google it. It's. I'm not going to Google. It's, it. I don't it's, care. It's <laughs> technically technically a red meat. It is. It is incredible. It's what it is. It is that is true. Uh, Cliff checks in. Cliff, uh, good to say what's up. Thanks for checking in. Tuck also some parting shots, and uh, good to hear Tuck chiming in. All of you for uh, making time. Appreciate you doing so on the Hale Varsity uh, YouTube channel. Speaking and of always, shots. Subscribe and, and like there. What's up? What did you? What What were you guys drinking earlier? What did you get bought? Rumple mints. No, <laughs> that, that is a that is a uh, Ameristar delicacy. Or our dear friend Scott will bring us uh, rumple mints here from uh, the Single Barrel. This isn't old fashioned. Oh, so mm. classy before the draft. I see. Well, it, it's it's just one of the best tasting cocktails you can get. This it's, is also it's true. As simple as that. I've, I've never had, well, actually, I was going to say I've, there's never a bad time for an old-fashioned. There's plenty of bad times for an old-fashioned. Yeah, that was actually probably. the wrong thing to say. But if you're in the mood for a drink, there's never a bad time for an old-fashioned. Right. I mean, uh, after, you know, the one that puts you over the edge, that's the time for a, a bad old-fashioned uh, when, you, uh, when you go to <laughs> waking up on the floor. Uh, again, uh, shout out to Brian on site here, a uh, big time Husker fan from Virginia Beach. As he is here, it's pretty awesome uh, to have him here. Big day for Nebraska. TJ Latif is here. He's in Lincoln, 2025 quarterback prospect. Nebraska landed a bear of a tight end today. Put him nice. Right on. Tip your Put waiters. <laughs> try the veal. Uh, right? That was uh, so bad. <laughs> I know. It, it, it was. Again, again, when you – I'm challenging you, there's no uh. bad time for an old-fashioned uh, take on – but Nebraska are able to – You're right. Uh, right now, Connor's going to just start playing in traffic so he can yes. get away from us. It's but, a shame the show's coming to an end. Right. Bear <laughs> Teddy uh, is in at tight end for 2025, a three-star talent. Nebraska also landing uh, another, I believe, commit – uh, earlier today, uh, Tanner Turch, Denver area athlete, making his commitment. So we'll have some more on both of those dudes, dudes uh, tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow's show, we'll check in with Jacob Padilla. Uh, thoughts on the spring game, thoughts on the portal world turning on the hardwood. Big big week for a lot of Omaha prospects going elsewhere officially. Proud of Fairbury, Bill Dolman going to be with us 
tomorrow. And then Clausburn, he's imaginary. He wears red. He will be back tomorrow at 540. But uh, come on down, get to the single barrel here, part of your Husker celebratory weekend with the spring game. And, again, back here tomorrow, uh, check that, back here Saturday 8 to 10. Reminding you to get to Hurt at Sports Bar and Grill for the Team Jack event tomorrow night at 5.30. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Get the podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play with Hale Varsity. Back tomorrow at 4. Thanks.